For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. We gather together today for worship on the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Mississauga, and acknowledge their stewardship throughout the ages. May we live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with its people. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Trinity on Main, the United Church in the heart of Newmarket. I invite you to light your candle at home as part of our gathering together as a faith family. And as we light our candle, let us remember that God is love and we're God is, there is love. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out all fear. Let us celebrate the wonderful love that ha God has for all of creation. At Trinity, we are seeking to build bridges with our brothers and sisters in our community. So I share this invitation from the Iman from our local mosque. It is an opportunity to serve our community in a new way and also build bridges with our um, brothers and sisters in the Muslim faith. Good morning, fellow neighbors from the United Church here in Newmarket. My name is Mohammed Bimat and today I would like to introduce myself and my organization. I was born and raised in Hamilton and moved to Newmarket in 2015 to serve as the Imam of the Newmarket Islamic Center. In regards to my education, I spent seven years in seminary in South Africa to become an Imam. Upon returning to Canada, I enrolled in the MPS Masters of Pastoral Studies program at Emmanuel College and have recently completed my program. The organization that I have started is called Crescent Community Support Services. Both Christianity and Islam have given great importance to loving and caring for neighbors. Jesus called loving your neighbors as yourself the second greatest commandment. And the Prophet Muhammad said, none of you can truly have faith until he loves for his neighbors what he loves for himself. Our goal is to build a strong, loving, and connected community. And a recent program that we have started is free grocery drop-off services for seniors, individuals with disabilities, and individuals who have been affected with COVID by COVID-19. I would love to work and collaborate with your community, whether it's with the program that we are offering, or if there's another program that you guys are doing, and I would love to come and volunteer. With peace, Mohammed Bimat. This week we are hearing the story of transfiguration, and the transfiguration story is always the last week before Lent, and it's hard to believe that our Lenten journey begins next Sunday. Or should I say on Wednesday as we celebrate Ash Wednesday, and there will be a service on YouTube, so that will be sent out to you. Also, for those who like to follow a Lenten booklet, there is one that we have through Sanctified Art, and it um, will be on my porch, <laughs> Rick and I's porch. And so if you would like to come and pick one up, know that you're welcome to, to, to do that. Also, it's Happy Family Day. It's Family Day weekend. And it might be a little bit strange celebrating Family Day, but not being able to gather in the same way. So whether on phone or Zoom or a porch visit, may you enjoy your family day. May your heart be filled with gratitude for your family, chosen or birth family, when whatever form your family takes. Have a blessed day. And it's Valentine's Day. March 6th, Rick and I are um, hosting a marriage enrichment course and that might be something of interest to you. It's seven weeks and it's called the marriage course. It's through Alpha and um, the couple who the videos present wrote the book 
the marriage book. So if you're interested, contact me at revlinda at trinityuc.ca. And for Valentine's Day, what a perfect way to begin our worship with um, our dear friend Ursula singing, Perhaps Love. come to praise God with our hands and our hearts, through our voices and our listening ear. We praise God with all that we are. We praise God who is known to us and yet still unknown to us. We come and praise God in all God's mystery. Let us worship. Let us pray. God of grace, we are on this journey as people of faith, people longing to seek you out and rejoice in you. And as we come together to worship today, we come not as your perfect people, but as those in search of healing and hope. 
We, we recognize there are many times that we have turned our hearts away from you when we have closed ourselves to your love. Instead, we hang on to our fear or our guilt and those things that keep us from freely coming to you. When all along, O oh God, you call us to be warmed by your love, to be open to experience your grace. Forgive us and give us the courage, O oh God, to open our hearts to accept your love. Help us to come before you today completely as we are, knowing that we are enough and to trust in that, to trust in that as we find acceptance and grace. May our worship this morning be so filled by your spirit that we find a deeper meaning in the words that we hear, in the music that we hear, in the prayers that we say, and in your presence. We pray in the name of Jesus, our teacher and friend, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the good news in Jesus Christ. God loves us more than we love ourselves. God forgives us and encourages us and frees us to love one another. This is wonderful news. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Gospel reading today is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to God, who is our rock and our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. On the night before he was killed, Martin Luther King Jr. spoke to the supporters with these words. We have some difficult days ahead, but it doesn't matter with me now because I have been to the mountaintop and I have looked over and I have seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we, as a people, will get to the promised land. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. These words were spoken on the night before he died. Now we may not all be Martin Luther King Jr. We know we're not, but many of us have had mountaintop experiences or even two 
over the course of a, our spiritual life. It might have been a fleeting moment of spiritual insight or a vision, a call to change direction or an epiphany, those moments where something which is usually routine or veiled becomes clear and significant to you. These experiences rarely happen on mountains. They happen in ordinary places during unexpected moments, maybe watching a sunset or at a beach or listening to a hymn or another special piece of music. It may have been on a retreat or in a relationship or in a time of illness, a time of joy, or even a time of stress. Really, we can experience mountain experiences, wonderful moments at any time. The Spirit of God can be experienced when we least expect it. And so it was with Jesus' friends, Peter, James, and John, as they struggled to understand the true nature of the mission of Jesus. They had witnessed Jesus' teachings and healings. They had been fed on a hill with 5,000 others and had seen miracles happen. Yet they did not completely understand Jesus' mission. The transfiguration changed them. They did not see the whole picture, but they saw Jesus more clearly. For us, the transfiguration marks a crossroad in the gospel story. It marks the middle of two great progressions, the progressive relationship and the revelation of Jesus' identity from birth to his baptism to a shining glory on the top of a mountain. And then his ministry, and his journey to the cross and resurrection. Scripture tells us that Peter, James, and John followed Jesus up the mountain so they could pray together, something that they often did. On many occasions, they would leave a crowd and go off to find a quiet place to pray, to renew their spirits. This time, while the three of them were on the mountain, praying, something different began to happen. The appearance of Jesus' face changed, his clothes became dazzling white, and he was transfigured. Jesus was transfigured. And then suddenly the disciples saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. They too shone, and together they spoke about what was yet to happen in the future, all the things that Jesus would face. In response to this spectacular moment, Peter said to Jesus, it is good to be here. And from that moment on, Peter and the others would see Jesus differently, not simply as a great teacher, but the Messiah, the Holy One. They were forever changed by seeing the glory of Jesus. Isn't that what many of us hope for or search for? A holy moment, an experience of Jesus' splendor, an instant when God's call in our life becomes clear to us. Don't we all, as followers of Jesus, long for an experience that brings us so closely to Christ's presence that we know from the de depths of our beings who we are, that, and we want to know that what God's plan is for our life. Scripture tells us this moment for, of transfiguration for Peter, it was such a transformative moment that he asked Jesus, should I build something to remember this moment? Peter wanted to hold on to the moment. He wanted to capture the feeling, building something that would give him more time there on the mountain, more time to take in Jesus' glory. And building a dwelling or tents would give him something tangible to grasp. I can relate to Peter's desire, can't you? We too want to hold on to those important moments in our life where there is clarity. We don't want to let them go 
because they are so fleeting, so fragile. So we want to do something, make something, erect something to make it permanent in our lives, to make it real and something to cling to. But during Peter's planning, a voice interrupts his plots and plans and announces that this Jesus is none other than God's beloved son. And so it was important. The best thing that Peter could do is to listen to him. In that instant, everything for Peter was still and clear and made sense. And of course it didn't last. Jesus returned to the Jesus that Peter had always known and the lights faded and the glory no longer shone. That day when they needed to leave the mountain and return to the mission before them, Peter needed to be pulled up from the ground, brought back to his feet. And there was Jesus pulling Peter back up, bringing him back, reminding Peter that he was with him. And when Peter was faced with not being on the mountain, the presence of Christ was still there. Peter will struggle to listen and to follow and to be faithful. Actually, he will be, do more than struggle. He will fail and Jesus will reach out and raise him up again and send him forth. And I have a hunch that each time Peter fell down and got up again, that he would go back on this day and recall the words, just listen to him. Listen to Jesus. Peter's heart was forever changed. His life was shaped in that experience and he realized that no matter what else he would face, he was called to listen to Jesus and that Jesus would be there to pick him up in life, a promise that he could hold on to. Change of our hearts does not need to happen on mountaintops or in the middle of a raging storm. Hearts are changed in the ordinary moments of our everyday lives. Transformation or change of heart brings clarity and it happens when the veil is lifted. Change hearts happens when we recognize Jesus at work in our world or in our own life. It may happen in a quiet time of prayer or a time we have experienced being held in prayer. It may be a time when we felt truly connected to another or a true connection to creation, a fleeting moment that drives the direction in our lives. Those experiences can help us through the difficult times when life comes crashing and when life is tough. When that happens, we can look back to those moments of clarity to bring light to the difficult times in our lives. Those moments of certainty can reassure us when we are not so sure. This is life and this is faith. We try our best in life and sometimes succeeding and sometimes coming up short. We have moments of insight and moments of denial. We fall down in fear and we are raised up again to go forth in confidence. And like Peter and the disciples, like Martin Luther King Jr., we too are called to listen. We are called to discern God's way in the world, called to work with God. And yet when we are unsure, when the path is not clear, when we cannot hear the voice of God's leading, when we cannot clearly see the path before us, then where do we go? I found the words of Thomas Merton's prayer helpful, especially in those times when the road ahead seems unclear. It reminds me that the path in front of us may not be known, but the path in front of us is one that we seek. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I do not know for certain where it will end. 
nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from the desire to please you. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me in the right road, though I may not know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always. Though I may not seem to be lost and in the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to make any journey alone. Amen. God works in us and through us in the many moments of our life to shape us and give our lives direction and meaning. Amen. Good morning, Trinity United. This morning, I'm going to teach you two new songs for worship this morning. And again, as always, please feel free to sing along if you want to. But if you don't know the song um, or you're not comfortable to sing along yet, just open your hands, open your hearts and experience God through this song this morning. So the first song I'm going to teach you is called Lord, I Need You. Just crying out to God and surrendering and saying, you know, I can't do this all on my own, all on my own. God, I need you to help me get through this. And what a perfect song for a time like this. The second song is called Good, Good Father, just celebrating and praising this good father that we have who loves us just the way we are and will be there for us no matter what. So I hope you enjoy these songs and can join in worship whatever way you want to this morning. So let's begin with Lord, I need you. Just 
righteousness, oh God, how I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. We've been blessed by a new ministry at Trinity, and I'm so grateful for Sandra McCleary and the way this ministry is coordinated through the UCW, as well as the caring team with Kathy Barker. And so this morning, we are going to bless all these beautiful prayer shawls, all that have been made with love and with tender care and prayers as they are knit. So let us bless them and let us pray. God of grace, we give thanks for the hands that have knit these prayer shawls. Bless the hands of Helen, Carolyn, Nancy, Maggie, Judy, Diane, Linda, Ina, and Sandra. Bless these hands as they continue to knit and create shawls as a tangible symbol of your love and our prayers. May the ones who receive one of these shawls May they find in them a warm and safe haven, a warming and comforting place, a place of security and well-being, a sustaining embrace that will carry them in good times as well as difficult ones. God of grace, may they know the comfort of being held in prayer by their faith family and held in your constant faithful love. Amen. As God's people, we gather our prayers. God of the mountaintop, God of the valleys, God who is with us wherever we go, we thank you. We thank you for the many ways that you come to us and reveal your presence. We thank you for mountaintop experiences where we encounter your holiness. We thank you for the times when we come to you and you transform us and help us to go forward in faith without any doubt of who you are. We thank you for the times when we walk with you in the valley, when you enable us to serve you and carry out ministry in your name. O oh God of grace, how amazing you are, how incredibly blessed we are to be your people. Continue to come to us and continue to help us to open our eyes to see you and to find you on the mountaintop and in the depths of the valleys. Continue to open our hearts in gratitude, we pray. God, we give you thanks for our families, for our faith family for the families we have built and the families that have chosen us. We are grateful for the gift of your love, the gift of your love and the love that we offer and receive. God of us all, in our world today, there are so many places where healing is needed. You know the wars that are being fought and the lives that are being lost. You know the many places where violence and hatred and oppression are prevalent. You know where your people are hurting and where there is greed and desire for power. You have created us, O oh God, but we are not always living in your image. Help us to live as your people and help us to reach out to those in need to actively work for faith, um, for faith and for peace, to share the bounty so that all may have what they need in order to survive. Even in this time of economic uncertainty, help us to see that we have so much to offer, that we have a great deal to share with our brothers and sisters around the world. Creating One, it is in your touch that can make such a difference. And we see this so often. 
This morning we ask for your touch as we lift our prayers before you. And we pray for all who are grieving, grieving the loss of someone they love, grieving a death of a relationship, or grieving a missed opportunity. We pray for those who need your healing touch and we hold in our prayers Catherine, Alexis, Vince O'Reilly, Bill Harper, Ollie and Lucas. Be with them, we pray. Let your light surround them, bringing healing and hope. God, we also ask that you be with the doctors and nurses and therapists and all medical staff who work so carefully and tirelessly to bring healing to those we love. Be with those in our community who are struggling, who are going through situations and experiences that leave them uncertain as to their future and which way to turn. God, you know our hearts. You know those things that we long for and need to share with you. Help us now as we silently offer our prayers. In trust, we open our hearts. In faith, we know that you hear us. We pray in the name of Jesus our Christ. Amen. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am you are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways To us You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us Oh, it's a love so undeniable I, I can hardly speak in peace So unexplainable I I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still into love, love, love You're a good, good father It's who you are, 
It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Go into your week knowing that you are embraced by the love of God, a love that is sweeter and more tender than you have ever known. Follow the path of Jesus, the path of love, and know that the Spirit is with you, working in you and through you, bringing love into action. Go with the blessing of God our Creator, Christ the light of the world, and the Holy Spirit love's power. Amen.